On April 25th, Carnegie Russia Eurasia Center in Berlin opened its doors. Uh, our new center in Berlin is a continuation of famous Carnegie Moscow Center. Carnegie Moscow Center was established in 1994. It was the mother of all Carnegie Overseas Centers. And then, not surprisingly, April last year, Vladimir Putin government has shut it down after the start of Russia's brutal invasion against Ukraine. Most of our scholars have left Russia immediately after the war started and were located in various places in Europe and in the Middle East. And Carnegie decided that to recreate the center is a good idea to provide sense of community and to provide home to many of my colleagues that I have a privilege to lead. Uh, center in Berlin will not be just a continuation of what we did in Moscow, but it's going to be an expanded team that will look at regions in Central Asia, South Caucasus, and Eastern Europe. We will also work very close together with Ukraine initiative that will be built out in DC and that will bring leading Ukrainian voices on key issues like security guarantees, reconstruction of Ukraine, and reforms. The challenges facing today's world are daunting, and Russia is unfortunately source of many of that, with arms control regimes falling apart, continuation of war in Ukraine, and um, hostilities being protracted for the time being with no uh, fundamental resolution inside, and multiple second order and third order effects like increasing uh, energy insecurity in Europe, rising uh, costs for food, and increasingly dysfunctional nature of the global governance because of Russia's retaliation against Western sanctions and the attempts to deplatform Russia from many of the global and regional institutions provide sources of tensions that make this war insecure. Uh, aligned by the mission of the Carnegie Endowment to reduce those tensions and seek solutions for durable peace by educating the publics and decision makers. We in Berlin aim to provide really clear-eyed, in-depth, uh, evidence-based analysis for the public and decision makers alike to clear understand what kind of challenges we are facing, what's up there around the corner in a year or two years' time, and how to reduce the tensions and make the peace more sustainable and durable to avoid the war.